record. Hi, I am Malachi Wickerman from Genwick Media and ShermanTales.com and ShermanCraft.com. I'm going to do a little interview here with Jen from Jen Plays Minecraft and Jen Corzad channels on YouTube. We have a Toronto Craft channel on YouTube as well where you'll see this video and others of me gaming in Minecraft and as of most recently also Diablo 2 and we're here to talk about Diablo 2 today. Um, I am the rookie. I am the amateur. I don't know a lot about gaming and I'm kind of a virgin at Diablo 2 and Jen the gamer guru here is going to tell us a little bit about it today. Um, and we might talk a little bit more about Genwick Media if we have time. Um, Genwick Media is going to do some gaming, we'll also do some indie publishing, and we're just getting started out. Sort of a grassroots movement. We like gaming, we like writing, and uh, you know, we're kind of homegrown. So, this is our first vlog. I hope you guys like it out there in YouTube land. Jen, what do you want to tell us about some gaming foundation of Diablo 2? I think that's where we're going to start. Yeah, alright. Diablo 2 is. It's an old game now. It was PC based and it, it came out um, 13 years ago, actually. So it's it's up there in age, and it's actually got pretty decent graphics for its time, and all the gameplay is fluid and smooth, so, and it's still a relevant game today. And a lot of people actually play it. It's kind of surprising how many people actually play it today. Um, I am surprised. I, I saw on the list of games that that are running all the time, and and you didn't even show them all to me. And, for the age of the game that people are still out there playing, I was surprised. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's because the game is it's relevant today, and that's because of mostly I'd say the ladder system has a lot to do with it. Um, but the game is Diablo 2 is a game based on quests, going out and questing, completing quests, so you can move on in the story and defeat the bosses and feel like you accomplished something. <clears throat> but along the way. Uh, you find items and gear and and you level up your character you decide what kind of skills and stats you want to put into it basically you're shaping your character to, to however you want to play however you want to make your character so it's kind of like your little baby that you're raising growing up <laughs> you amateurs out there leveling up is very important let me tell you it is because a little is. while ago on, on, on take one when we before we had all my audio troubles we're in take two now uh, he, his game was just sitting there kind of playing and things were going on and he's like finally I leveled up finally I'm like oh good I don't know what that it is, means, it is a good feeling <laughs> when you're level 91 and you finally hit level 92 <laughs> it takes forever well, to do that one day I'll understand that and you other amateurs out there in YouTube land you'll know too and the reason it takes long to level up is because normally you start out the game um, as a level one character and then as you play through the game and complete all the quests and whatnot you actually level up normally, so it's kind of it's not really a grinding system where um, you're close to death all the time, but rather it's a game where as you complete quests, you get experience based on the monsters, and the monsters get a little stronger as you get a little stronger. So it's like a normal game, and you get cool skills and stuff, and you get experience, and then you level up. But then once you get a little bit higher up, higher up in levels like level 60, level 70 is when you start to get a lot less experience for monsters you kill. So you make an, a game, and then you go kill the bosses that you've killed before, because that's the best experience. And then you make a new game, all the bosses and everything are reset, and then you go kill them again, and you get more experience. And basically that's called runs in Diablo talk. So for instance... <laughs> Diablo speak, okay. <laughs> yeah, so for instance in my game right here, um, this guy sitting on his throne, his name is Bale. He's the prime evil, uh, the oldest of the brothers, and he summons his minions, several waves of minions. Oh wow, look at that guy. That are extremely difficult to defeat. Um, so people make games, and everything is reset. So even if you kill them once, when you make a new game, um, they all respawn, they all come back to life. So you can kill them again. And they give the best experience in the game. And then after you defeat his minions, you can go fight him and defeat him yourself. So are we describing mechanics of the game here? Is this fall under game mechanics? Right. This would be leveling up your character, I would say. So this That's is leveling up. Progression okay. of the game, progression of your character. And there are several different characters in the game, all with unique abilities, which also makes it very exciting to learn all the different characters and to play as all of them. 
Yeah, I guess once I get past my initial uh, uh, fear of the complexity of the game, I'll probably start enjoying it once I understand it a little better. Yeah. If you can appreciate video games, then you will appreciate this one. No doubt about that. Yeah, when, when I made one video so far myself uh, while we were playing together. I got one video out there. Actually, we made a couple, but I've only released one so far. And, uh, you know, I started griping, like, oh my god, it's like a college course. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we're going to talk it's about three exactly different... It's not exactly like a college course. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Uh, uh, maybe I exaggerate a little. It's a learning curve for you. But... <laughs> we're going to talk about three main things here in my, my tutelage here, my, my, my lessons to be learned. Game foundation, and economics, and mechanics. That's why I was asking Jen here if that would fall under mechanics. Right. But go on, go on, sir. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about the different uh, versions of the game as progressing through time. Um, for instance, the expansion came out. So originally, it was Diablo 2. That's what it was called. Um, and it was the second installment in the series, of course, which is why it's called Di Diablo 2, not Diablo. Um, but as you go through the game, you find items, armor, weapons, gems, stuff like that. And all of these items are different, they're unique. There's a lot of items in the game, so it's, it's not boring at all. Check out the book that comes with this thing. He says it's not a college course. <laughs> I've had college books this size. I have, I have. Yeah. <laughs> I not, don't even know. Not never, with such a cool cover, though. I've never even really used the strategy guide much. I learned everything from playing. <laughs> I'm a bookie kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> I may refer to the textbook from time to it time. It will help you, it will. I've referred to it a couple times. It helps. Um, but so as soon as as soon as you think that you've learned about all the items in the game, suddenly more items show up, or or a different colored item appears, and different abilities are on the items, and different effects and boosts, and it seems like there's no end to it at all. And then the expansion came out. And then the expansion came out. And Diablo 2: Lord of Destruction is the ideal expansion for any game that you want. Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. Yes. Sometimes expansions kind of throw games off or changes things about them that you don't really like or people don't really like. Lord of Destruction didn't change any of the game mechanics. It only added to it. It added quests. It added an entire act, which is how the game is divided into. It's divided into five different acts, which have usually have six different quests to complete. And that's how you go through the game. So it, it added an entire act and six quests to the game. It added two new characters with brand new skills that you can play through. And it added countless items. So if you thought there were a lot of items before, there's probably twice as many in Lord of Destruction, such as runes. Runes are probably the most important item in the game. Ah, so now we're going to start to delve into economics, aren't we? Uh, we could a little bit. Um, well, you had been telling me a story uh, a while ago about economics and about, well, and, and I asked you, originally there was, there was gold in the game. There is gold. And, and I, I, I said to you that the game makers in, intended to use this gold to buy stuff, right? And, and you explained a little bit about that to me. But as the game progressed, runes became more important. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So you used to be able to buy stuff with the gold, right? Yeah, gold is mostly for repairing items or resurrecting your mercenary or if you see a fancy item in an AI shop that's the, that's the kind of stuff that you would spend your gold on. What does the AI stand for? Artificial intelligence. Oh, so I thought so I just non-playable characters that sell you things. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that's really all gold is is good for. It's in game game mechanic the gold. Um when it comes to trading with other players, it, it's a barter system. That's what it is. So and the, and the true economics of the game has progressed to something else, a bartering system, a player bartering system. That's, that's a good way to put it. I, yeah. I follow you. So for instance, I have this sword right here, which is a rune word sword, meaning that you take specific runes, you put them in a specific order, and you put them into a socketed item. So for instance, this sword has five sockets, which means you can put five runes in it. You put, five. Okay. you put five specific runes in a specific order, and it gives the sword special abilities and effects that it wouldn't normally have. Oh, really? Awesome. So is there different sequences that are going to give you different 
outcomes or effects yes, of, of exactly. the runes. Awesome. I kind of see now. I kind of like that. It's a synergistic the, the, effect. The programmer in me kind of likes that. <laughs> yeah. It's a synergistic effect because no, no, runes have have abilities that when you put it into a socketed item, it'll give that item specific abilities. But when you put them into a specific order and make a rune word out of it, it gives it even more abilities than it would normally have. So. Cool. Cool. One, I like one, that. One and one and one don't make three, but make ten. <laughs> Not binary, but anyway, uh, <laughs> a little more programmer humor there, folks. Um, so the barter system. <laughs> so that's cool. I, you know, I understand that that has become true in a lot of gaming, and, and changed what happens. And I can't even put that in the right words, but I mean, <laughs> things so, that people, that the game creators weren't expecting, happened. That's, and change the world of gaming too. That is the beauty of when you give the reins to the, to the people, to the users. They will take the reins and they will make something out of the game. <laughs> as perfectly shown in Minecraft. Now, you, you had told me a couple of interesting stories about how things scam and stuff like that. And we can get to that. But I think you had some yeah. more stuff you wanted to talk about bartering. before I interrupted. So let's, yeah. You want to talk more about so, bartering? Right. Go ahead. So it's kind of bartering. It, I mean, it is. It's, it's like was explained to me that in Mexico the way the stores work is that you say okay I'll give you this much for this item and they'll say oh no it's gonna be this much instead and they'll make it a little more expensive and then you'll say no I can't do that so it's a barter system <laughs> same thing as buying cars or selling cars and, um, so there's this ring called the Stone of Jordan that is rare to come by and it's got effects and it'll give your character abilities that most rings wouldn't normally give you, and they're hard to come by, and so people would trade a lot of good stuff for them. So it kind of became the currency in the game, this ring. Um, so for instance, I might have this piece of armor here called Griswold's Heart, an ornate plate, and... That's not Clark Griswold's Heart, is it? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't talk about it. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> Um, so this might be worth, say, this isn't real, but it might be worth three Stone of Jordans, three of those rings. So I might put this up for trade, and then somebody would be like, okay, I'll give you three Stone of Jordans. That would be a fair trade, so I'd say yeah. But the problem is that as the game got more popular and people had higher level characters, they could easily go out and find these rings a lot easier than they could before. So the market became flooded with these rings. Inflation. Inflation in a game. How cool is that? <laughs> the same thing happened with World of Warcraft. Um, but so the people developed their own currency, their own economic system, and it became inflated. So how did people fix this? Or how did it kind of fix itself? More rare items in the game became the currency. So these runes, these high level runes, became the currency in place of Stone of Jordans. These rings became basically, they lost all their value because there were so many of them in the market. And so runes became the new currency because runes were hard to come by and use high level runes to make rune words, to make the best items in the game. So then Griswold's heart may have been worth three Stone of Jordans before, but now it's worth, say, one high rune. Hmm. Yes, it is a little complex, a little bit complex. Yeah. I'm glad I get to play this back and <laughs> and hear all that again so I can get a second take on it. And I plan on writing about it anyway, so I mean, that's where we're going with this. I'm going to do a little a little writing about this possibly. You know, we're going to do other games as well. Um, but you have more to say about this, right? Yeah, the last thing I want to talk about is the ladder system in the game, which is what makes it relevant. Yeah, you said that it, earlier. And it I was makes it to, popular. What, what is a ladder system? I, I don't remember talking about that with you. So Diablo 2 came out with lots of items, and then the expansion came out and added a whole lot of new items to the game. And then there's the ladder system, which is basically another version of the game. It's, a, it's the same game, but more items are in the game. More rune words, more armor and stuff that you can't find in a regular game. So when you make your character, you can check the box that says ladder character, and then suddenly your character's a ladder. So that character can't join a regular character's game. They're completely different. 
So you have to go through the game, and then you find these items that you couldn't normally acquire in a regular game. But then, twice a year, the ladder, all ladder characters are reset to become normal characters permanently. <laughs> really? Yes. So that's all part of the authentication system through the servers the, of the, the gaming company? Right. So when we say ladder, we're talking about like the rungs of a ladder, is it kind of yeah, parallel kind of, that, and yeah, the way you, you climb up and, and progress yeah. through these items that nobody else can get the other gamer? Right. Types can't get. So then all those items that you were looking for for your normal characters that you couldn't get, you then transferred over from your ladder characters, which were just reset to normal characters. Run that by me again. So you, you transfer your stuff over to... Once the, the ladder characters reset, and yeah. you, you have, you've acquired all those items that you couldn't normally acquire, Okay. you can transfer them to your other characters. Your other normal character? Right. Oh, I see. I so see. you can get all the gear that you were fishing for before but couldn't find. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's interesting. So you got six months to do this and, yeah, and, and, exactly. and move your booty before it gets reset. Yeah, yeah. Because once it's reset, do you lose your booty? You got to move it before the, the booty, before the reset, or? No, no. Oh, at it's, reset. It's all your ladder characters turn to regular characters. So okay. you, that means you can't acquire those items that you could before. Okay. All right, yeah. I think I follow. But you, once your character tr transfers into, transforms into a regular character, you keep all of your items, all of your loot and everything that you found in the so game. So it's sort of an automated thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not, not a race to transfer. Right. Okay. So then, the only way to find all those items again is by making a new character in Ladder and going through the game all over again and finding all those items again. Okay. And then it resets again six months later. Alright, so there's something else you purchased this Ladder? No, it's all part of the game. It's all oh. included. Okay, bucks. that's cool. So they just throw that in there. Yeah. I, I, like, I like the way you describe what they do for, the, for their gamers, this particular company. Yeah. They run the servers for free, you know, have to buy in once once you buy the game you're in I don't know what you purchase the game for but um, it sounds pretty cool yeah I like it it's a really good game yeah so basically those are the things you want to talk about and you had a couple of uh, interesting uh, <laughs> do you stories for me do you want to make that into the next video or uh, we can since we're, we're short on time here I don't know how long we've run so far. Yeah, we, we could talk about that next time. That could be a, a quick vlog that maybe we could even do right now real quick. It could be a, a story, uh, stories of getting scammed in Diablo 2. Okay, so we're going to end this right now, and, and the next video will be uh, some tales of scammed in Diablo 2. Okay, well, thanks. I think this was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And uh, guys at home, you YouTubers, uh, if you'd like to see it, uh, make some requests of some other games we might review, talk about, you know, just put it in the comments below and we'll, we'll look into that and we'll respond to you and, and we're happy to do any interaction and get to know you guys if we can, you know. Um, if you enjoyed the video, watching. make sure you leave a like and comment in the comment section what you think that we can improve upon or just any kind of thoughts or ideas that you have about it, any suggestions for interviews or games that you want us to play. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's yeah, free. Yeah, thank you. And uh, remember, we're at TurnerCraft.com, TurnerTales.com. We have a TurnerCraft channel on YouTube, uh, Gen Corzad channel on YouTube, and Gen Plays Minecraft. Dash is in the middle. Yeah. On YouTube. And uh, we're Genwick Media, and uh, in the future, there's probably going to be a few more sites for us to run and handle, which is <laughs> my job. <laughs> But thanks for tuning in, guys. Yes. Okay.